I am Dr. Anil Joshi, Professor of Radiology and working as the head of the department. Today we are going to see about pediatric chest diseases, plain radiographic approach. This is going to be part one and we are going to have more many more parts. The reason is very simple, there are many pathologies and to see it in detail will take a longer time. Now uh, let's get started, we will go to the first slide. You are seeing two pediatric chest X-rays. Now what is the difference? The first is neonate, new one. So you are seeing thymus. Number two, right ventricular dominance. Any right ventricular dominance in newborn is a common finding. Now let's go to the third, second one. In second what we are seeing is normally placed heart, normal lung fields, normal transfusions is the thymus which is seen in first is not seen in second. So normal thymus appearance is seen up to say a couple of months and then it goes off. So uh, here what we are seeing in second x-ray are the normal lung fields, normal cardiac shadows, mild prominence of main coronary artery is common and should not be considered as abnormal at this pediatric age group. Main coronary artery may be prominent in slightly elder children while thymus may be no, uh, normal in immediate newborns. Now let us see a normal chest anatomy. Now we are seeing two right lung, left lung. Again we are seeing a trachea in the center, then cardiac borders. Now here what we are seeing is right cardiac border which is formed by right atrium, the left cardiac border which is formed by the left atrium as well as left ventricle. Now we can see the aorta which is ascending aorta and superior vena gamma will form the right cardiac or uh, the right border of the mediastinum. SVC is not routinely prominent, it just seen, while aorta is also just seen, it never bulges outside. That is the right cardiac border. Now left cardiac border versus is formed from top to bottom is by the aortic arch then comes the, then comes the diaphragm. So CP angle that is the cardiophrenic and costophrenic angle should be clear. Now what we have to opti how we have to optimize the axis. Axis can be optimized as far as there should not be any rotation. Now how we know rotation is by knowing a distance of the clavicle from the midline. Clavicle end that is the sternoclavicular end of either side should be symmetrically placed on either side of the trachea or outer side of the spine. Number two, there should be deep inspiration. Now the criteria are the ribs. You should see more than six ribs. Eight ribs is a full inspiration, but if X-ray is expiratory, certain details will be obscured or we may misinterpret them. Then exposure factor is important as far as clarity is concerned. Now this clarity determines the sharpness. Now cardiac borders are sharp, good. If vascular borders are sharp, good. Then that means it is properly exposed x -ray. Exposure should be very short. Now pediatric chest we are seeing today. Now what are the aims of this study? The pediatric radiograph interpretation is often a challenging thing. Maybe because there are lot of uh, pathologies which looks alike. Therefore, a schematic approach is necessary and if it is followed, it can reveal wonderful information. It also needs, it needs skill of a radiographer as well as skill, skill of a radiologist. Radiologist experience is required. Therefore, we are conducting these lectures and we are going in detail why they are essential and how best we can make use of these techniques. A role of radiographer, role of radiologist, a training of radiologist, everything is important. Now how to pre, uh, interpret the pathologies? A simple thing, trachea should be central, then uh, deviation of trachea needs to be considered for shift of media standard. Now here there is one technical factor, if patient is rotated, if patient is rotated, if spine has got abnormal curvatures, you are going to get false interpretation of the tracheal deviation. Now you have to compare right lung with the left lung. Now if you are seeing the right lung, you have to compare it with the apices. Now apices to apices, mid zone to mid zone, low zone to low zone. Then airways and lungs should properly be inspected. 
not only for interpretation of x-rays but subsequently what we are going to see are the tubes and catheters which are kept now is addition to these we have to look for bony and soft tissue lesions otherwise there will be mess easily now how to step by approach which are called as abcd in our uh, routine uh, uh, conventional teaching a stand for airway and lungs so have a look at the airways both the apices both the mid zone with the lower zone the bones and soft tissues the ribs should be seen now if you are suspecting rib abnormalities in addition to chest pa you need to have obliques also now cardiac shadow cardiac salute cardiac shadow if you want to be interpreted properly a chest x ray has to be in deep inspiration number 1 there has to be proper technical factors and pulmonary vascular marking needs to be seen sharply otherwise you will make mistakes as far as edema is concerned in the pulmonary vascular spaces now diaphragm usually right diaphragm is higher than the left both the diaphragm has to be seen thoroughly the right is seen completely left because of the heart is seen partially now both the diaphragm has to be seen right higher left lower then the smooth counters ct angles and extra body equipments which include the pacemakers which include the leads which include the et that is endotracheal tube has to be seen for their location and their border now there are certain things which are not only medical legally important but they will make gross we will make gross mistakes if we don't look at them a simple thing like a side marker right marker left marker has to be there and the marker has to be right or left a coin or any radio opaque shadow will not work as a coin, as a marker right marker and left marker either of it has to be there if there are no side markers the x ray is not considered proper for reporting and it should not be reported for medical legal purposes now this determines whether the heart is on right side left side it is illusion if pleural effusion is there we should know right side or left side otherwise wrong side will be tapped now what is the penetration a good penetration x ray should show only four vertebral bodies now we are dealing with a cr that is the computerized radiography error in computerized radiography anything can be manipulated so even if your x-ray is technically wrong when you are taking you are given more cavities or more mls that can be compensated to some extent on cr but when you are interpreting the x-rays it should be a properly penetrated view that is only four vertebral bodies should be visible over penetrated views they are good as far as para spinal lesions are concerned the to uh, cardiac lesions are concerned but by and large if we use them we may miss soft infiltrates so over penetrated x rays should not be considered you can go to the cr and set them properly the under penetrated x rays is a slightly more problematic for simple reason the to cardiac lesions will be missed para spinal lesions will be missed so by no way a under penetrated x ray is accepted over penetrated x rays okay it will not give proper pathologies but at least you will be able to know that there is something wrong and go to the cr and correct it now what is the special requirement when you are dealing with the chest excess coming from icu right in addition to routine thing they will have placement of endotracheal tube now their interest is to know which is the location of endotracheal tube and has to be told from chest excess and it is see it is not that difficult then central line like superior vena cava line then any other jugular venous lines then they are put catheters has to be told to them most important are the pacemaker pacemaker need they need to know whether it is a right atrium or right ventricle so they will ask this question after the chest x ray where the pacemaker is placed correctly then pulmonary arterial catheter then pacing wires defibrillator pads they are external and not of uh, much importance they can be not outside then uh, intra aortic balloon pump feeding tubes feeding tubes are extremely essential if they are not in stomach we should inform them that it is not in stomach and the chest tubes particularly if the fluid is packed they want to know whether the fluid is over or the tube is blocked so it is one of a very important indication
Now we'll come to a basic interpretation of chest X-ray. Unilateral hyperlucent lung, that is lung which looks black on one side. So obviously a chest X-ray has to be proper, number one. Then you will have to check for scoliosis, rotation and tube position. That is when X-ray is shot, if the tube is tilted, you will get one side white that is underexposed and one is overexposed. So these all technical factors are very important. Before you come to a lesion that there is unilateral hyperlucency of hemithorax. Now chest wall abnormalities, this should be taken as a history, not only by the technician but also when you are suspecting anything, go to the patient and check for all these things, whether there is history of mastectomy, okay, then, then any muscle abnormality, then uh, pectoralis major absent or not, then uh, there is a surgical removal of pectoralis major for any surgery, flat surgery or mastectomy along with some surgical procedures. Then, unilateral fatty atrophy of the chest wall or sometimes unilateral atrophy of the chest muscles this needs to be known before we are interpreting that abnormality is in the lungs or in otherwise now pleural pathology pneumothorax and pleural effusions now these two things has to be properly reported and they should be cited now this is one of the indications where these two pathologies should be cancelled and want. Now we are continuing a heal. Uh, what will happen if there is airway obstruction? Then if the bronchial compression is there, maybe by the hilar mass or by the cardiomegaly or otherwise, then there will be abnormality. Then endobronchial obstructing lesions like air trapping, they are usually foreign bodies, tumor, mucus blood or any of the inflammatory tissues. Now obliterate then then comes the obliterative bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis obliterative. In that case also you can get a airway obstruction. Now go, let's go to the next pulmonary emphysema. Asymptomatic. Now it can be congenital lobar over inflation. It was also called as congenital lobar emphysema uh, maybe a couple of years back. Then there will be unilateral bulbous the unilateral uh, bullus or uh, bully that is unilateral that can cause a hyperlucency then compensatory hyperinflation if the one side there is a pathology other side will get compensatory emphysema that is called as the pneumonectomy pneumonectomy the lung is removed so other lung will have to go cope up with the work and the hypertrophy then there are vascular causes vascular causes into pulmonary embolism second are the congenital pulmonary artery hypoplasia or pulmonary artery stenosis. These two conditions, it's illegal that the same side lung will be hyperlucent. So this thing has to be borne in mind. Now this is the case, we are seeing a unilateral emphysema of the left side. Now let us see interpretation of this x-ray. The basic of congenital heart disease, we are going to see in some other lecture series. In this we will see very few that is just enumeration of it. What happens in oligemic lung fields? Oligemic lung fields, you have got very few conditions. A tetralogy of fellow, and second, hypoplastic right heart syndrome, and second, Epstein. So very few causes as far as oligemic lung fields are concerned. Now let's come to plethoric. Total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage, then plunkus arteriosis, this will be a plethoric lung field you will get. Then you will get non synoptic heart disease, more like in non synoptic heart disease again you get plethoric lungs there are very few conditions asd vsd and pulmonary valve disease or aortic valve disease now other than this other than heart you have to also interpret the pedicle now how the pedicle is interpreted the right side of pedicle is formed by svc then left side is formed by aorta and main pulmonary artery. So you will think the pathologies of these diseases when you are interpreting a pedicle, either narrowed or enlarged. Now let us come to cardiac chamber enlargement. Uh, plain say gives fairly good idea. Now first is left atrial hypertrophy. It's a shadow in shadow. Left atrial is basically a posterior structure. So heart itself lies over it. So how it is seen is shadow in shadow number one. Second is playing of corona. It is just below the corona. So when it enlarges, it pushes it and opens the angle more than 60 degrees. 
Now displacement of thoracic aorta to left side. The straightening of the left cardiac border. Distance from right border of the left atria to the left bronchus should be more than 77 cm. This is one of the criteria which was used in earlier days. Now left atrial enlargement can be graded. That is grade 1 is right border of LA is within right heart border. Grade 2 is right border of LA matches with right heart border and number 3 or more than that is right border of left atrium is right to the right heart, or heart border. Now come to right atrial hypertrophy. Right border of the heart is formed by the right atrium. So more than 5.5 cm from the midline is enlargement. The right border of the heart more than 3.5 cm from sternum we are going slightly above to the right border and 2 to 2.5 inches space in between vertical heights. These are the three criteria for left atrial enlargement. Left ventricular hypertrophy versus right ventricular hypertrophy. Often we see this on our chest cases and question is asked to answer this question whether the right side, left side pathologies, valvular disease, lung diseases. Basically what we need is to understand what happens when there is a left ventricular hypertrophy and what happens when there is right ventricular hypertrophy. Now let us come to first left ventricular hypertrophy. It is rounded left ventricle, the counter is rounded, LV apex forms obtuse angle with the diaphragm and three rise in cardiothoracic ratio, cardiothoracic ratio is raised. Now what happens in right ventricular hypertrophy, cardiothoracic angle is acute external contact is there that is seen on lateral exit and obliterated pulseless space so these are the three often cardiac size is important we determine it cardiomegaly so what factors determine the heart size the size of the patient obesity decreased lung volume and enlarge the appearance of heart so because of the obesity there is a decrease in lung volume and decrease in lung volume causes enlargement of heart but it is pseudo as we are saying that degree of inspiration poor inspiratory effort that poor inspiration can make the heart appear larger so properly deep inspiration extent is mandatory then contractility systole or diastolic can make up to 1.5 centimeters the difference in heart size in addition is by low heart rate, increased cardiac output which leads to increased ventricular filling. Now do chest configuration matters? Yes. Factors examination can compromise the heart and make it appear larger. Now patient's position, the heart appear larger if film is taken in supine position. So supine extends we should never ever take cardiothoracic ratio it has to be erect or we should interpret it cautiously now type of examination on AP projection the heart is further away from the film okay and closer to the camera this create greater B divergence and appearance of an increased heart size so for obvious reason AP X-ray should be interpreted carefully as far as cardiac size is concerned now congestive cardiac failure is often a indication for chest x-ray or we have to tell clinician if our heart is getting decompensated. Okay, now enlargement of heart is there. So enlarged cardiac failure, number one. Number two, left atrial enlargement, left atrial can get enlarged. Then hilar fullness, vascular redistribution with complete. What is vascular redistribution means? A linear interstitial opacity, curly line A, B and sometimes C then bilateral alveolar infiltrates and pleural effusion. Now what happened first? Once the pulmonary hypertension sets, what happened next? What happened next? First, because of the arterial hypertension, the fluid goes into the interstitium. There are interstitium as well as lymphatics, they try to absorb it and they try to readjust. Readjust. And when they cannot, then they leak into alveoli. When alveoli are filled, they can leak into the pleural spaces. So this we are going to see in more detail once we come to the excess. Now these are the cardiac sizes. Now what cardiac sizes are? First is normal position of heart that is called as situs solitus. 
Now see the what happens in sacral solitus. Where is the liver? Is on right side. Where is the stomach? Is on left side. Where is the aortic arch? Is on the left side. Where is the heart? Is on the left side. This is a normal situs. Let's go to the situs inversus. In situs inversus with dextrocardia. That is the second diagram, upper one, second diagram. In that stomach left side. Sorry, stomach is on right side. Liver is on left side. Heart is on left side. Then aortic knuckle is on right side. So this is situs inversus with dextrocardia. Now let's come to the third category. Situs solitus with dextrocardia. What happens in situs solitus? The heart has gone to right side. Liver is on right side. Stomach is on left side. And aortic arch is on left side. So this is situs solitus with dextrocardia. Heart is on opposite side. Now third one is situs inversus levocardia now in what happens is in levocardia the aorta is on right side stomach is on right side liver is on left side and the heart is on left side so this is situs inversus with levocardia now comes the pulmonary venous hyperation the first stage is cephalization the blood flow in apices is increased now what will happen in apical vein will enlarge. This is deer antler sign. These are the horns. They look like branching and they look in apices looks like antler horn, uh, antler sign. Now once the pulmonary hypertension is setting, first there will be more flow towards the apices. This is cephalization. Then second is interstitial edema. Then what will happen further? the fluid will start leaking from the veins or pulmonary arteries, pulmonary circulation into the interstitial. Now that will cause the interstitial edema and subsequently interstitial edema will look into the alveolar signs. Now this will cause curling line A, B and C. Now see here the heart has enlarged, fine. Then main pulmonary artery is also enlarged, that's very fine. There is cardiomegaly and there is suggestion of intracardiac cardiac shunt. Now how we know it is because of the main pulmonary artery, pulmonary hypertension and cardiac size which in which there is right ventricular dominance. Now this is interesting, this cardiomegaly, okay. Then pulmonary hyper arterial hypertension, fine, no problem. Then dilated inhominate vein, fine, no problem. Dilated SVC, okay. Now all these things cause a snowman appearance. Now as we have seen the cardiac pedicles how they are formed before the lecture or in the, in the earlier part of this lecture. Now here it will be very evident the increase in that pedicle causes what? That it causes a snowman appearance and that is corresponding with total anomalous venous drainage, pulmonary venous drainage. One of the important thing is to know where the broad base of heart is. The apex is shifted up, apex is shifted down or overall the base of the heart is drawn and towards the base. Now if that happens, there is not much differential, we have to go for pericardial effusion. In that we will get sharp heart border because the heart movement will not be as much as routine in chest is Now there is cardiomegaly, okay, then uh, decreased pulmonary vascularity, autogamic lung phase, enlarged right atrium and hypoplastic pulmonary trunk. So what could be? It's interesting. Now here there is cardiomegaly, lung fields are pathologic, then pulmonary arterial hypertension is there and interstitial fluid. A simple cardiomegaly, CCF pulmonary hypertension. Now there is cardiomegaly, uniform opacification of both lungs to consider respiratory distress syndrome. Now these two things are very close to each other. One thing is whether child is going into CCF or patient is going into respiratory distress syndrome. Best is to follow up on echocardiography. These are the two solutions, but by and will follow up, even radiology can tell these answers. RE is, is it, it doesn't progress much, it regresses and the child will get better, aeration will be better in subsequent exercise. Now, which side is the heart? Heart is on right side, that's fine. Then stomach is on right side, just see below the apex. Now, a large fluid level is seen on left side. Now, we have to consider a differential. If 
there is a fluid level and the remaining abdomen is gasless. By and large, we would have diagnosed it as diurnal atresia. Over distended stomach? Uh, please note, stomach would not be distended if there is a feeding tube. Fluids will be secreted out. So, that will give a combination of heart disease as well as duodenal atresia. Now, remaining gas is ga remaining abdomen is gaseous. That's another point. Now, this, there is right atrial hypertrophy, pulmonary hypertension, and plethoric lung fields. So, plethoric lung fields, uh, one of the signs of early CCF is burning of the vascular markings. And one of the signs of pulmonary hypertension is increase the size of right lower main pulmonary artery or high lung prominence. These things need to be watched. Now here we are getting plethoric lungs, the cardiomegaly is there and intracardiac shunt. See call very carefully, you can easily appreciate the increase in size of uh, pulmonary arteries that is plethoric lungs. That is usually intracardiac shunt. Again same, cardiomegaly, shunt vascularity, interstitial fluid. So what addition here is, see the vascular markings are blurry. So there is interstitial fluid. Now once the fluid starts leaking into interstitial, that means there is a slightly severe form of pulmonary hypertension or maybe the fluid is going now into the interstitial. Now a word of questions. All increase in particular size is not cardiovascular. Now see here, this is a false appearance of binding of vascular pedicle. What has happened is, right medial border is blood. Now if it is cardiovascular, you get fairly sharpness. Blurring means it is parenchymal lesion and there is no indication of SVC dilatation. SVC is not dilated. SVC is not dilated, right retrium is also not dilated, slight rotation is there and there is a non-homogeneous appearance of the cardiac lesion. So all dilated pedicle are not cardiac lesions. You have to think of consolidation also. Now uh, try to see the image later on, first try to diagnose. There is right ventricle hypertrophy, increase in cardiac size, but right ventricle hypertrophy is not associated with right atrial hypertrophy. Then there is enlarged main pulmonary artery, so likely to be BSD. This is cardiomegaly CCA. We have described it. Now look at SVC. SVC is prominent. Cardiomegaly, the ring of vascular markings, and sharp cardiac borders. Now practically say, here what we are supposed to appreciate is the bilateral symmetrical parahyalar lesions that is called bat swing. By and large, if it is because of CCF, they are symmetrical. If they are not symmetrical, think of two conditions. One thing is orthostatic, that if the patient or child is lying prolonged on the one side, and second is superdiagnostic pneumonitis. So this thing needs to be reported about superdiagnostic infection in addition to CCF. Now there are certain diseases which comes together and they are diagnosed on chest x-ray. This is a group of pathologies. If you are finding in a chest x-ray there is vertebral body abnormality, you will have to look for not only vertebral bodies but also for the anorectal, cardiac, tracheoesophageal, renal and lip abnormalities. So they are for forming a group called as VATE. So this group needs to be checked if you are finding abnormality at one place. See now this is two different patients but they are showing pathology with ribs. So first thing what attracts you is the pathology of ribs. Then if you start this seeing carefully, you start that there is a heavy vertebra, there is a segment infusion anomaly of spine and if you see the first X-ray, you start finding the many things. The heart shape is something like Chinese wood shape with uh, alleviated lung fields, think of the appropriate pathologies. Now, this is part of abdominal pathologies, but while doing a chest X-ray, you should know it. Uh, pediatrician may tell you, I am not getting feeding tube properly inserted or it is not going into the stomach. So what we see when you are going to take a chest X-ray, put a feeding tube and take X-ray. So this is one of the things which gives a wonderful information. A normal esophagus and a normal feeding tube. Normal esophagus, there should not be turning of the feeding tube. It should go through and through or if it turns, it is abnormal. Now in addition to that, now first I say what you are saying is heart is normal, lung fields are oligemic 
and you are seeing the Garek shadow, the Garek apex is lifted up Chinese boat shape plus there is stomach on right side. Now you have to be careful. One of the indication what a feeding tube tells you is where is the position of esophago gastric junction. You pass a feeding tube here you will know that esophago gastric junction is normal. Now half the left hemithorax is occupied by the dilated stomach. Now if you see the feeding tube it is getting turned off. So what is happening here? Esophago gastric junction is normal. The stomach is lifted up. Now additional thing which you have to think here are the diaphragmatic pathologies. Now where it fits in? Neither eventration, diaphragmatic paralysis. But if you see carefully fundic height and the lungs, you can rule out easily some pulmonic effusion. So these are the differentials you will have to think in when you see such excess. Here what helps you maximum is to locate esophago gastric junction. Now often on chest X-ray we find there is a unilateral opacification of some side, right side or left side. Now how to approach these X-rays? Now these X-rays X -rays needs to be approached by a tracheal mapping. Now conclu conclusion can be drawn only by observing trachea how the deviation of trachea you have to see in addition to that where is gain in volume, loss of volume or crowding or slewing of the ribs. Now deviation of trachea we are going to see in detail in subsequent slides. Then increase in volume that also we are going to see and crowding of ribs usually indicates uh, collapse. Now what are the causes which pull trachea towards opacity side, towards same side, it's lateral. Now pneumonectomy when lung is excised. Number two total lung collapse by irrespective of the etiologies, then pulmonary agenesis, the lung has not developed, and pulmonary hypoplasia, the total or partial, that can cause as trachea pulling to same side. Now when trachea remains at same time, these are the consolidation. Consolidation, there is not much displacement of the volume, so there is neither in decrease in volume, the airspace is occupied by the inflammatory exudates but there will not be much increase in volume or decrease in volume if there is collapse the causes are different we will see it in different lecture now one thing is consolidation pulmonary edema acquired respiratory diseases then pleural masses like mesotheliomas and chest wall masses like heaving sarcoma can cause all these things now what are the causes when trachea is pushed away from the opacified side is pushed Pleural effusion, it pushes, diaphragmatic hernia, pushes again, large pulmonary masses and diaphragmatic rupture. All these things can push trachea towards opposite side. So think of these causes in that case. This is a classical example of unilateral opacification. Should be approached in a way it has been seen just now. Now one of the conditions which we have discussed, opacification, in that we have discussed about pneumothorax. This is the pneumothorax on the left side then there is a collapse of left lung. Now this combination has caused shift of mediastinum slightly towards the right side, towards the opposite side. Then there is hepatomegaly and both the domes, if you see, they are almost at equal level in condition where usually the right dome should be higher than the left. Now let us come to diaphragmatic hernias. Diaphragmatic hernias, there are multiple types. So basic types are gogonalic, it can involve domes of the diaphragm and is posteriorly situated. Then contains of the bogdalic hernia, stomach, liver, then spleen and intestine. The second are the morganese hernia. In morganese, it is defect of the anterior part, bogdali, posterior. Then uh, when there is a defect, then herniation you can expect are left side hernia, if it is on left side, then there can be colon, stomach, omentum, then uh, if it is spleen, small bowel, pancreas or adrenal, and if it is right side hernias, then it can contain liver, gallbladder, kidneys and omentum. Now look at this uh, embryonic, embryological diagram. In that what you are seeing, first is morganese hernia, they are the anteriorly situated. 
सो मॉर्गेनिक फोरामिना इज ओपनिंग कॉज बाय फेल्यूर ऑफ फ्यूजन बिटवीन द सेप्टम ट्रांसवर्सम एंड लैटरल बॉडी वेयर इंटरनल मेमोरी आर्टरी क्रॉसेस डेफिनेट सो दिस इज शोन एज द अपर वन नाउ कम टू द बोगनाल the height and hernia will not consider today it's a different topic altogether we consider that time now in bogdali this is a posterior lateral defect okay then because this is posterior lateral defect it arises from malformation of pleuro epithelial fold or its failure to fuse with intercostal muscles so this is the embryological basics Now this is diaphragmatic hernia, right side showing herniation of the lumbar commenta. Look at the hepatic flexure that gives you all idea about it. Is high list that should have been occupied usually by the lumbar. So hepatic flexure, if it is goes up, has to be some reasons. So this is one of the reason that lumbar is either herniated or there is eventration. These are the two causes. Now it shows the clear cut bowels on left side, left side diaphragmatic hernia. Interesting here. You can see double densities here on the right side. So one has to be liver, second has to be either omentum or it can be a bowel. Now if you see down, the hepatic flexure is slightly high placed. So there is herniation of liver, omentum. If these two things goes, it is usually a left sided. diaphragmatic hernia and not eventration we have seen lot of conditions where there are diaphragmatic hernias not all the time now see here what is happening the right side there is a big fluid level now from where the fluid level is coming you have to go for that stomach now if stomach is not seen separately it has to be a fluid level from the distended stomach now why it has gone into thorax are the only two conditions either eventration or a diaphragmatic hernia put a feeding tube no matter esophagastic junction is or take a lateral that will give you the idea now another indication what we see now the chest x ray is the foreign bodies now foreign bodies whether they are in the trachea or in the esophagus now these two are different patients they are different patients now in first we are seeing it these two are same patient and different projections in some we are seeing same uh, first we are seeing ap and second we are seeing lateral now why the lateral is taken to know whether the point for in body is in the trachea or in the esophagus now here we are seeing clearly the trachea is seen separate so it has to be in esophagus so for in body esophagus no trachea is seen separate now this is uh, for film reading in first you are seeing a for in body now can a pax say tells us whether it is in esophagus or it is in trachea the answer is sometime if the foreign bodies are bang in midline it is not possible but if there is a deviation if you can see the tracheal right main division of the trachea the foreign body is located in it you can be sure of it and third thing are indirect evidences like middle essay what you are seeing is there is a collapse there is a collapse then there is a consolidation and there is compensatory emphysema on opposite side so both thing need to be considered now there is superior metacerebral mass so also there is can you see the hilum overlay sign yes hilum is not seen separately so there are two things one thing is mediastinal mass so also there is hilum mass so right hilum mass left paratracheal mass plus hepatosplenomegaly so likely to be a lymph node mass or lymphoma here we are seeing left sided diaphragmatic hernia now this is one of a wonderful investigation i told you when the feeding tube gets curled into the blind ending esophagus now here what is happening is instead of uh, feeding tube which can cause sometime a false finding we are using rigid tube and that gives us same diagnosis and not only that it tells that there is uh, intestinal gas indicating the lower intestine is connected to airway either trachea or to the left bronchus now if in case of doubt how to confirm how to confirm it just put little like now once you have put a feeding tube you are taken a plain x ray while just removing the tube put some water soluble 
normal neck tie which will be safe for everywhere so uh, usually it's a safe procedure because the contrast is not harmful to the lungs there are high chances of aspiration in these patients so it is esophageal atresia type 1 a fullness of cardiac shadow right ventricular dominance before the lung field should not have any problem in saying this is a cardiac shunt uh, here you have to see right atrial hypertrophy enlarged main pulmonary artery and congested lung fields we have seen few x-rays and few indication which can be diagnosed by plain x-ray of a neonate or a child but i want to tell you very thing frankly that there are lot of pathologies and there will be a lot of uh, lectures i will be covering on same topic this was the part 1 and will be subsequently there will be part 2 part 3 and part 4 also i don't know but these will totally cover most of the pathologies now we this will come to a end of our lecture i thank you for giving me your valuable time please know radiology is not a race to run radiology is not a race to run it's a process in the process you be part of it and enjoy it i am what i am in the show logging off till we meet again have a fantastic time ahead do your best and get knowledge be beneficial to the patient and to the society all the best do best